In this video, I'm going to go over a brief example of how to conduct an ordinary least squares regression analysis in SPSS. Um, obviously, this is the sort of analysis that if you're going to be using, you'll want to read a fairly detailed chapter or book or take an entire course on the topic. But um, So there are various details that I'll need to gloss over, but I'll just show you the basics of how to conduct a linear regression in SPSS. So here we have a data set with a variable for age, a variable for political knowledge, a variable for internal political efficacy, um, and a variable for external political efficacy. And we're going to use those four predictors to attempt to predict political engagement. So to, to begin, we'll go to Analyze, Regression, Linear. We will enter our dependent variable or our criterion or outcome variable in the dependent box. We'll enter our predictors, which will be age, political knowledge, internal political efficacy, and external political efficacy into the independence box, and we'll enter those simultaneously at the same time. And we'll go to statistics. We'll ask for the confidence intervals for the regression coefficients and also for the descriptives and collinearity diagnostics. Under plots, we'll ask for a histogram of the standardized residuals and we'll also ask for a plot of the predicted of the residuals on the predicted values. Finally, we can click OK to run the analysis, and we'll get our output. So our first table will give us the means and standard deviations for our variables. Um, so we'll note that for age there, the mean is rather low. This was a student sample, and the standard deviation is also rather low. So we have a restriction of range uh, for age, so we might not get the sort of relationship between age and political engagement that we might expect. We can also take a look at the bivariate correlations between the variables. Um, if any are incredibly strong, uh, we might um, not want to enter those two predictors in the equation together because they would um, pretty much cancel each other out in predicting the variance in the, in the criterion variable. But here we don't see any incredibly strong correlations, certainly nothing above 0.8 or 0.9, so we're okay to proceed. We can see that the DV has a significant correlation with internal political efficacy, a weak but significant correlation with external political efficacy, a a moderately strong correlation with knowledge, pretty much no relationship, or, or let's say a weak relationship with age. Uh, so we can see that our variables are, in the bivariate sense, um, related to our predictor, and there's no incredibly strong correlations between our predictors. The strongest would be between political knowledge and external political efficacy. So we can move on to interpreting our model statistics. So first we'll want to check to make sure that all of our predictors are in fact entered and we have selected the correct dependent variable, which we have. We can interpret now the multiple R squared. This is basically the correlation between the predicted values in the regression equation and the actual values. So it's a, a fairly strong um, 0.49. Uh, the R squared, this is the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable or the criterion that is collectively accounted for by the predictor. So we're accounting for approximately 25 percent of the variance in political engagement with our predictors. Adjusted R squared value is an adjustment on that to um, uh, um, correct for random associated variance. Uh, but still in the same ballpark as our R-squared value. 
the standard error of the estimate is an, is an estimate of how much error we expect in any given prediction, or another way to look at it is it's basically a standard deviation around the predicted values. So any given score is expected to be off by, its residual is expected to be about 0.8. Here we have a significance test for our model. So this is well below any criterion we might use. It says zero, but if we double click on it, we'll see that uh, it's essentially zero, but um, not quite zero, obviously. So we would move the decimal point over 13 places. So it's a pretty uh, good equation in the sense that we're predicting 25% of the variance in the outcome with only a few variables and that is a statistically significant um, uh, prediction. At least the R squared is certainly different from zero in a statistically significant way. Uh, we can move on to the table of the coefficients. First, the first um, coefficient is for the constant. That's often not terribly interesting. Um, this basically gives us the value of the dependent variable engagement when all the predictors are set to zero. And since zero, um, first for a lot of these predictors, doesn't make sense as they're scored. Um, it's um, not incredibly interpretable, but nevertheless, it's a part of the equation. So for age, we see that there's a, a weak and non-significant relationship between age and political engagement. For knowledge, there is a positive relationship that is statistically significant such that for every unit that our measure of knowledge increases we expect our measure of political engagement to go up by 0.15. For internal political efficacy um, there is also a significant relationship for every unit that internal political efficacy increases we expect our dependent variable engagement to go up by 0.34 and for external political efficacy, there is also a statistically significant effect such that for every unit of external political efficacy that a score increases, we expect engagement to go up by 0.18. We also have the standard errors for each of the unstandardized regression coefficients, which if we divide the standard error into the regression coefficient itself, we'll get the t-value, which is used to uh, come up with the uh, p-value or the significance value. Uh, also we have a column here that says standardized uh, coefficients. These are basically the um, regression coefficients when all the variables are set to z-scores and you run a regression. So to interpret one of these, so for instance knowledge, um, for each standard deviation that knowledge increases we expect engagement to increase by 0.29 standard deviations. For each standard deviation that internal political efficacy increases, we expect engagement to increase by 0.28 uh, standard deviations. And for external political efficacy, for each standard deviation that that increases, we expect engagement to increase by roughly 0.14. Uh, so those have the same significance test as the unstandardized coefficients. We also have, because we asked for them, the um, confidence intervals for the predictors. And as you can see, most of them exclude zero, although some of them come pretty close. Um, however, the, the confidence interval for age includes zero, which means um, we can't rule out the fact that there is no effect for age. For the other predictors, they do exclude zero, so we can have some degree of confidence that there is a relationship between each of those predictors and the criterion when controlling for the other predictors. And then finally, at the end, I've asked for some uh, collinearity statistics so we can assess a multicollinearity. So if these predictors are too strongly related, there might not be enough leftover variance in any given predictor to actually predict the outcome. But uh, the tolerance value basically tells you how much variance is left over after you use all of the other predictors to predict a given predictor. So here we see that we have uh, quite a lot left for each of these. Certainly nothing to worry about. We'd start to be concerned if that number was um, very low. So if it was like uh, 0.2 or 0.1, we might start to be concerned that we don't have enough leftover variance to actually predict our outcomes. But with these, we can see there's plenty of 
leftover variance. And finally, we can go on to interpret some of the plots of the residuals. So we're hoping to see a normally distributed um, resi uh, plot of the residuals, a histogram of the residuals. Here we see it's not quite normally distributed, but uh, aside from this little dip right here and a slightly longer tail over here, I would say, generally speaking, it's it's not a bad um, distribution for the residuals. So I would I would continue to interpret uh, this regression equation. Um, as far as a scatter plot of the residuals, we have the predicted values here, or standardized predicted values here, and the standardized residual here. And what we want to see here, one of the assumptions for our regression analysis, is that the variance in the residuals is more or less equally scattered across um, the predicted values. Now it's it's not beautiful as we can see there's there's a bit less variance over here in the residuals than there is in the middle and at the end but that's probably because we just don't have a very large number of cases as many cases at, at either end so although it's not pretty and there is a bit of a funnel shape I would go ahead and interpret these results although there are corrections that are available if you I uh, feel you have violated the assumption of um, homoscedasticity of the residuals. So that was a very brief overview of how to conduct and interpret a regression analysis. Of course, if you're going to be using one of these um, for a research project, uh, you'll want to, to do a bit more reading into the um, assumptions of the test and how to test those assumptions.